Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about Home Assistant. In this video I will show how you can install the Home Assistant Supervised. This video I'm showing because a lot of people started to ask Alan, can you install the Home Assistant Supervised? And that in the first time I didn't realize why. I was looking one of the previous videos where I show how you can install the Home Assistant in the Docker and in this one I install a container version. And this container version is quite limited. And a lot of times I started to show some installations for some add-ons that you can do or some supervised applications. And when I am show some installation as some add-ons or some uh, supervised installations, a lot of people cannot follow it. In order, they don't want to fully dedicate one computer only for Home Assistant. They want to choose this computer for Home Assistant, but as well for another's applications. And then I decide that it's interesting to do it and I will show how to do it. This installation I will do in a virtual machine, but you can do it directly in a computer. This one is more dedicated in a Debian, principally for a 8664 bits. If you want to do in a Raspberry Pi, in the next video I will show it, but in this video I will show how you can install directly in a computer. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show exactly this video, but don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and let's do it. So before we start to do any installation, let's go back from the comparison of method of install. The first one will be OS that will dedicate full all of your system only for the home system. So in this way, you're going to have your device can be a Raspberry Pi or can be a computer only dedicated for this home system. And in this way, you're going to have a full control and you're going to have full functionality for it. You're going to have the supervise, add and backup and manage OS. In the last video that I showed how to install the Docker, you're going to install the container option. And this container option has quite limited options as don't have the supervise, you don't have add-ons, don't have backups and you cannot manage it, the OS, what you can expect. And the same thing that will happen for the core. But in this video, I will show how you can install the supervisor that will have exactly everything apart for US because the OS will be the Debian that we are going to use. And in this way, you're going to be able to do all the application for the supervisor. You're going to be able to do all the add-ons and you're going to be able to do backup. In this case, if you already have your home system installed as US, you can migrate everything for supervisor, only do a backup and implement the backup. Have this one in mind, first we're gonna understand what we're gonna do for the Home Assist Supervisor. I already have opened the GitHub page where they show how to install the Home Assist Supervisor and that we come here what is required to do. This one's quite important to, do, to see because this one will show what's the minimum requirement for you have your Home Assistant installed and work perfectly in the way that you want. If you come here, they already show what is required for you to have before to do the installation. So I come here and they say, for you have a full system and a supported system, you need to have a Docker C, okay, we're gonna install it, a systemd, a network manager, a app arm, a Debian Linux 11. In this case, if you have another version of Debian, it will work. Look like if you're running a Raspberry Pi, it's not exactly the Debian 11, they will work, but it will not be supported. They will have most of the functionality, they will not have any problem, apparently, but if you have any problem, they will not support you. But if you do the backups, you are kind of safe. Other thing, you need to have the Home Assist OS agent. Have this one in mind, we come back here and they will show how to do the installation. So before we start to do the installation, we're gonna open our machine. In this case, I have a virtual machine only because it's easy for me. I didn't want to dedicate a computer only for this one. And because I'm gonna show how you to install and after this one, disinstall and delete this image. So it's easy for me. I come here and I will do a login as a, my Cyber Lab user. And this machine is just zero. I just format it, I just installed Debian. In this case, it's Debian 11, so it will be all support, everything's okay. But uh, we don't have anything. First thing that we need to understand is what's the IP address of our machine. So we can come here and put CMD and open. If I come here and type IP address, so I know that the IP address of this machine will be this one, 
192.168.1.145. In this way, I can start to tape all my comments and all my scripts here, but I don't want to do it because I want to simulate that you're really running a machine outside, look like you have a Debian computer running your garage or any place that you want with this operating system and you want to do a proper serve and everything in the way that you don't need to be in the from terminal here. To do it, we're gonna open our putty. In our putty, we're gonna tape exactly the same IP address, will be 192.168.1.145, and we're gonna open it. First time, as usually, they will show this page that you are sure that you want to access the machine because it will be the new key. So it's totally fine, I will put yes. And now I will tape my user, SauberLab, and my password that I define. And now I have a look in my machine. So I can minimize this page and can open my putty. Here I will clear everything to be clean. First thing that I need to do, it's open as a router. This one, it's because a lot of application that they're gonna do, it's not work as only user, or they will ask your password all the time. So it's easy only to put so, and that's we're gonna tape the password. Remember that when we are doing the installation for the Debian, they ask, please define the password for the root. Yes, it's this one that you need to do. First thing that we're gonna do is update and upgrade our system. This one is really important because we want to be sure that our system is working well and don't have any problem. So in this way, you're gonna tape sudo update get update and after sudo update get upgrade. So they will do the update and upgrade of our system. Because I forget to put yes, they will need to put yes that I want to install everything, so yes. And I put enter and I will wait. This upgrade will take a little bit more time or less time depending which revision and how often you update your system. If update a few days ago it will not be a problem, but if updates a long time ago it will take a little bit longer. In this case, I believe that it will be fast, it will take around 2-3 minutes maximum. So let's wait. Okay, in the same way that I'm waiting to finish it to upgrade everything, update, I will come back here and I will see which application that I need to install. Here the red suggests for you enter as a root. So I already did it, sudo or sudo su, in our case that is there means only sudo. And here they say which application that you need to install. So we're gonna install exactly the same application. In this way I already copy everything here and that I can go back for our putty and hope that they finish, yes they finish. So what I need to do? I need to install all these applications. So I'll come here and put enter. They will do the installation. The last thing that we need to do is uh, fix all the broken installation. You need to do it, I like to do it, because the last time that I tried to install the home assistant without to fix all the broken installation, it didn't work and that I need to run it and everything messed up. So it's better to run it straight away. So we're gonna do sudo apt fix broken installation, install and run it. In this case, it doesn't have any broken one, but potentially could happen, so it's better to avoid it. Now we need to reboot our system only to guarantee that all the settings or all the application that we did, it's work well without any problem and will not have any issue in the future installation or to continue our process. So we're gonna come here and put to sudo reboot, enter and we wait to reboot. If I put OK and close this putty and I already open my virtual machine, the right is start to reboot everything. So I can come here, enter, and I will wait to have a full reboot. So just finish to do a full reboot for my system. So now I can open put again, tape exactly the same IP address. Remember, before we start to do any other installation, start the Docker or the home system, please be sure that your IP is a fixed IP or a static IP. Because I don't want that you do all this installation, lose your time to do it, and that the IP address change and that will mess up everything. So be sure that you put as a static only to be sure now. And that we can open our put, enter as a cyber lab again. So now we are inside our machine. We're gonna enter again as a root. We're gonna tape our password. And now we are root. We're gonna put CD only to go for the base configuration. And now we're gonna start to install our Docker. To do the installation of Docker is simple. I find it as an official Docker installation script that is core and that get docker.com and get Docker. So I run this one. And after we're gonna do a proper installation of this script or we're gonna start this script. As they do, they copy all the information and say that's a get Docker. And now we're gonna run it. That is sudo sh get docker sh and we're gonna put it. This installation will take a little bit longer time depending on what configuration that you have. If you have uh, a lot of cores and a lot of run memory and a fast SSD, it will take really fast. But in my case, because I'm running in a normal computer, take a little bit longer, but it's not an issue. 
Here, if you look, we already have the client Docker engine version 20.10. What required is 19, so it's fine. The same thing for the service 20.10. And here, the rest of the information, they say that it's working. So now what we need to do, we need to define our user because they don't have user at all. What use that I will do, I will do exactly the same user that I was using here, Sauberlab. So I'll put sudo user mode docker Sauberlab and I will put enter. After this one, I already create my user. After create our user, we go back for the page for requirements. We come here and we see what we installed so far. So we already have installed the docker where we have revision 20, so it's totally fine. We have installed all the rest applications and we're running with a Debian 11, that is great. If you're running with all the revision of Debian, they will work as well, but it will not be supported. And that's now only thing that we need to install, it's the Home Assist OS. Here I open the page for Home Assistant OS that they show what you need to do, but then we need to see what supervision, what system that we need to download. If I open this one, that's right here, they show a lot of revisions of uh, this OS agent that we can download. In my case, I'm gonna use the Linux x664, but if you're using a look like an ARM system or a Raspberry Pi or anything, we need to use another revision that we're gonna show in the other video, but in this case, we're gonna use this one. So we come here back and we're gonna clear our page, only to be a little bit more tight, and we're gonna install this uh, OS, but before we install, we should download it. To download it, it's easy. We're gonna put, we're gonna put w, get, and our address for the load. If you are using another revision, don't forget to change this one for the CPU that you are using, and that's we're gonna do the download. Wonderful. We did the download. Now we can install it. To install, it's simple. We're gonna put sudo d pkg install us and exactly the same revision. If you're using revision 2.2.3, don't forget to change it and don't forget to change that. And we're gonna install it and wonderful install. But how we are sure that we'll install it? It's simple, we're gonna check it. To check, only we're gonna run this script, the link in the description as well, and we're gonna put this one. If they appear all this information, it means that it's working. Because if it's not working, the OS agent do not appear it at all. So now we can do the installation for the home system. First of all, we need to download all the configuration for the home system. So we're gonna use get home system and all the home assist supervised step. And that's we're gonna put it and they will download. Now we can clear this page, only to be a little bit more tight. Then the last thing that we need to do for this home system is install this application. So we're gonna put sudo install and the same name for the home system supervised that we have before and we put enter. So now we'll take some minutes until they do the installation for the home assistant supervisor, the home assistant containers, home assistant, everything to be working well. Wonderful, once that they finish to install the supervisor dot container, supervisor, uh, startup script, supervisor and everything, now we can check if it's really work well and everything has been installed properly. To check if everything has been installed properly, you have two ways. You can go there and put docker and check the system, but I'd like to use the portrait. So in this way, we're gonna install it. So first we're gonna create our volume for our portrait and we create our volume. After this one, yes, we can install our portrait and we install with this script and put enter. Now we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna wait to do the download, wait to do the installation. After the finished installation, we're gonna open the port 9000. So we're gonna wait it. Wonderful, when they appear this information here, it means that it has been installed. So we can open the port 9000 to check and create our user. In the port 9000, there already appear this page where we need to create our user at least the first time. And that's we define our password and the user will be admin and I put create user. So now I can come here in my primary, my containers, and I have all my home assistant style and should be everything work. But how I know that this work? We can open our home assistant. As you know, to open our home assistant will be the same IP address plus port 8123. So let's open it. Once that I open my port 8123, there already appear this page where I can create my user. So we'll create my user, Sauberlab, the same thing, my password. 
and I can create. But before I create, remember that I told you that you can migrate all your information for your home assistant in your Raspberry Pi or your computer and run here. You can come here and put alternately, you can restore from previous backup. So if you click here, you can select where is your backup. You can locate where you save your previous backup, input it, and that's it. they will restore all the information, all the application, everything that you did. So you don't need to set up everything from zero. But in our case, we're gonna set up everything for zero. So you put create an account, you locate your place. Now it's the time that you want to do shared information. I like to put as a share exactly because I want that a home assistant prove themselves. All the time that allowed home assistant to share, to have this information, it's good because they will know what is going on wrong and that will try to fix. If they don't have data, how they will improve anything. So we're gonna allow them that they use and have this information for me and I put next. Now they already have some integration. In this case, we'll not do any integration and put finish. Now we're at the start our home system, as I told, now we have the supervisor. So here you can come here, add-ons. Now you can install all the add-ons that previously you could not do because you was running in a Docker as a container mode. Now you have a full access. You can either set some backups so I hope that you like this video. In this way, you can have the Home Assistant supervise it and you can run all the applications that previously I showed you. You can run zero tier, telescale and everything and you can run as a full US, but you don't dedicate only your machine only for this Home Assistant, but you can work parallel for it. If you like this video and think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave your like. If you don't like, leave your dislike and see you next time. Bye.